when we're using abstract methods, you could have a normal class of animal that's not abstract, but some of the functions are abstract. So in this standpoint, think of an abstract method being used as a standard, meaning I better have a function that says get sound for any of my derived classes. I better have a get food function for some of my other ones that are below us, derived classes or subclasses, whatever, get weight. So again, the animal class wasn't abstract, but the functions that were inside saying, look, I don't want to define them here, but you need to define them, whoever inherits from me. So you use this as one way of almost like catching errors from yourself, is that if you really want them to have it and they didn't need to define it later, then use the word abstract so that you remind yourself, hey, in cat, I need to set the sound. I need to set the food or get food. I need to set what those functions are going to be. And that really, really helps out on, well, frankly, being able to do that. Now, remember, that can't be private because otherwise I can't access from this. So you don't see private abstract. You just see abstract or public abstract, which you're going to see most of the time. Okay. Use the abstract methods as a standard that's further defined later on. Um, you're going to notice that the method actually has no squiggly braces around it. That's the other interesting weird part. And again, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of code here in a minute. So bear with me on that one. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that for, now, for right now for methods. But again, methods, a nice way of setting a standard for your subclasses. And now this is why it's an exercise. Sorry it took so long here. So I have code already ready for you. Download the code, follow the instructions that I have here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get things set up for you and, and frankly so that, well, you get a little bit of experience with it. The code is incomplete. That's why I'm asking you to finish it out, create setters and getter functions, the two strings, hourly set the name and hire date, set the name and hire date here, and to make you I have a little video there that make it easier too. So go over that for a few minutes here. I'll give you a little bit of time to work on that. If there's a problem or a question that you have with this, this particular set, please let me know. Please email me where you are in this particular problem. I'll be happy to help you. But I am going to go over an answer with you here in a few minutes. First of all, the solutions are here in the notes, but more importantly, if you, again, in this presentation style, I can't show you all the code because otherwise it's crazy big, big code here. At the very bottom, I give you a link to all the code. I would honestly click on that so you can kind of see what's going on here, but I can at least bring up some portions that are important in this particular presentation here. So in our abstract employee class, you knew it was going to be abstract class employee. You know that the get monthly pay was going to have to be spelled out somewhere. This really, none of this is super new here. Notice I can set values using the equal because this is an abstract class. It is being inherited, but I don't, I don't have it physically set literally to anything in here because that's really what my subclasses are going to do. So like for salaried employee, this is obviously a heck of a lot longer here. Um, hash code, we'll cover more about that later, but override, there's our equals, okay? This, this means that I'm gonna be using this equals compared to maybe another equals that I had, which I don't have above. There's my two string. There's another override telling me that, hey, this two string's gonna be what I'm gonna be using no matter what, and then go from there. So notice the functions that you have here. There's really not, you know, anything crazy about it. But the important part is, is that everything is laid out from what we got asked for in the abstract class. Everything's set up. We have our two string, we have our setters and getters, we have some other items that we wanted. All of that was defined really here. So yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Then I'm gonna go over to our hourly employee. There's hourly, there we go. And it's a little bit spread out as well. 
And again, notice the overall same setup. But hourly, the get uh, rate, where the heck is that? Where is it? Hash code, employee, it must be on the next page, of course, go figure. Yep, there's, got, notice that was different. So again, use abstract as some type of setup for being standardized. That's what's the important, most, more, most important process out of all of this is about standardization.